Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. So I have been doing a lot of Slayer on my Hardcore Iron Man so I can get to 87 Slayer and be able to get the Trident to slay Zora comfortably on this Hardcore Iron Man. However, I am still quite far away from that goal and Slayer unfortunately is super super slow on the Hardcore Iron Man. Definitely gets pretty damn boring at times. But luckily for me, Raids is out and I'm actually able to uh, play on two characters pretty easily. So I have been doing a lot of raids on my main account while at the same time doing a lot of Slayer FK on here and it's been working out pretty damn good. I was so freaking dry at raids until last night. I finally got my first drop. I gotta say raids has got to be one of the best content that old school has ever had. So I want to share with you guys my raids experience thus far because it's definitely one of the best experiences I've had in a long time in this game. Especially when it comes to like group activity. So I've been playing Iron Man so long that yeah, Raids really brought it back. The joy of uh, being able to like co-op with your friends and stuff. It's just such an amazing experience. So let me just start off by talking about the rewards. So in general, thus far since I've been doing Raids a lot now, you know, uh, we've gone pretty good as a team and we're like pulling in consistent you know points and stuff so basically every time we finish a raid now every person gets around anywhere from like 100k to like 400k ish uh raid and that's not including you know your possibility of getting like a rare drop so i guess the average is like 200k a person or so maybe 200k for uh, more experienced or more high level teams although on the first day though we didn't really get much because Dying a lot really does screw up your points <laughs> and yeah basically if your points for example is like under a K you're really not gonna get anything not even close to 100k so once you get used to rates and all of that you'll definitely be making like around 200k average a rate since rates main rewards are really what you're after so like in the long run let's say you get like a prayer scroll or like a twisted bow or even like any of the other items that are currently in like the 50 mil to 100 mil you're gonna be making a pretty good profit in the long run but yeah in short term it's pretty bad but long run you'll be making so much money so the next thing i want to talk about is the party size and how that like affected my overall raids experience so on the first two days of raids i ended up going with a party size of seven so my original team consisted of seven people and we wanted just to keep around that number just because we thought it was like optimal or something but i realized those seven people was pretty difficult to uh, coordinate but then again it's not like we knew mechanics much or we knew each other that well from the beginning but it was definitely harder to coordinate with you know such a greater number of people and after one of my friends got hacked and you know he lost his bank we kind of had to uh disband the group and kind of have to find our own team so i ended up just hooking up with my older friends and uh, some other people and yeah, now my raid scoop is now a pretty dedicated team of around 45 people. And I noticed that doing raids with like a small number of people actually made it a lot easier to coordinate. So like raids just became a lot easier. Unfortunately, a lot of the raids rooms are kind of like small, too small for like a big group of like seven or more. Because some of the bosses, a lot of the bosses actually, does a lot of these AOE mechanics where if we don't coordinate enough, we just have a large you know, mass of people just getting hit for no reason. And honestly, it just was a lot easier to uh, start the raids in general just because there was a lot of times where you know, you want to start with 6 or 7 people or more, but like somebody might not be on and then you're like, dang, we gotta go get somebody else. But the likelihood of getting 4 people on you know, versus like 7 at the same time is a lot more consistent. So. I was able to just bang out race with uh, four people super easily. Never really had to wait for anybody to log in. So another thing I want to talk about is the degree of skilling involved in raids itself. So before raids was released, I had the idea that like you needed all your skills to be pretty high. You know, every single non-combat skill had to be like 80 plus or something. And I felt like that was what Jagex was hinting at, and a lot of people were like assuming the same thing. But it actually only a few selective non-combat skills were like super important to raids. So stuff like herblur, fishing, farming, and a few others were critical to raids, especially herblur, like fishing and stuff became really minor. Once you got good at raids, you really only needed to use herblur to make your like food and stuff. But skills like runecrafting, fletching, smithing, and maybe a few others didn't seem to affect the raids at all. Maybe there are some hidden mechanics involved with those skills but as far as my experience with raise goals and what i've learned thus far you know among the community uh, quite a bit of 
skills actually aren't useful to raids. Maybe in the future they might make them useful. And fortunately for me, like big boy skills like Herblur, I actually had pretty high level of, so I was able to like basically you know help the team out a lot making potions and and whatever. But let me tell you, every single raid that we do and everyone else does involves a lot of potion making. Like I shit you not, man. Like we had to make at least I would say 60 plus brews for like a four man team and like 20 plus restores. They call different names uh, for the raid versions, but yeah, every single raid we had to always prepare like this X amount of like potions for the last boss, you know, the Great Ohm. And you just cannot get away from that. And that is basically the biggest bottleneck of raids is how time consuming making the potions can be. And luckily Jagex are aware of how like big of an annoyance it is to, you know, be making all these potions every single raid. So tomorrow's update, they're gonna add uh, two patches, you know, to the prep area and some other things just to, you know, make all this prepping process much easier, which is great. Honestly, sometimes I feel like raids is like farming simulator or something instead of like, you know, crazy PVM challenge. But yeah, it's definitely a bit of everything though. But enough talking, it's time to show you guys the fruits of my labor at raids thus far, and I'm hoping to get some more. Yes! 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 I am so happy right now. We just PR'd at 54 minutes, but the layout was pretty good. But at the same time, I finally broke the 20 plus dry streak. I think I was getting close to the 30 plus race dry. Wow, dude, that's so nice, man. Let me do the examine thingy. Oh, right, it says 60 mil right now, man. Since I highly doubt anybody has this hat except for, you know, a very few amount of people, let's just put it on, you know? Check it out. I mean, best in slot mage hat, man. Plus a magic bonus. It's not bad, I mean. Yo, this is not bad, dude. Plus a magic bonus. Nothing, man. Oh, it's sold. Oh, nice. We got 58.3 mil. All right. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. And that will be all for today's video, guys. This video took forever to make just because of the amount of effort and time required to just get one drop. I really didn't want to even bother making a video about raids unless I got at least something good to show for it. So yeah, we finally got that juicy item. I am looking forward to doing more raids. I'm getting better at it with my team every single day. We are constantly beating our times and just innovating. And also we're still looking for some bigger, better drops. There's so many items from raids that we can get that are in the hundreds of mills. I kid you not. So getting those drops is going to be such an amazing experience overall. And I might as well just continue AFK Slayer on the Hard Pirate Man while I do race because that way I can get to 87 Slayer without feeling too bored. So that would be great as well. If you would like to stay up to date with future videos from this channel, feel free to subscribe. And also if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like as well. We really appreciate it. As always, hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you guys soon with another video in a few days. Take care.